Hi and welcome to Chef's Gear. We are finally out in the open and today I'm going to show you two really fun recipes, so stay tuned. Alright, so let's start the day with a summery drink and it doesn't get any more summery than a pina colada. So all you need for that is some pineapple juice, coconut rum, uh, Malibu or Four Fingers, whatever you can get your hands on, some sugar syrup, maracino cherries, coconut cream and some lime. I like to put it in. And thanks to our sponsor, we have an awesome ice cube machine. There you go, just fill the glass with ice. Do the same with a shaker. All right, so once you have ice in it, use a Malibu. I'm gonna use about 80 mils. So that's a 50. That's another 30. I like to use some sugar syrup. It's all sweet, so don't go too crazy on it. I'm gonna put like 10 mils in. About 80 mils of coconut cream and a dash of pineapple juice. What's a dash? The dash is about a 50. Everything goes in. Now, close the shaker. And now you need to make a shaker face for about 10 seconds. Yep, that's it. And through a Holson strainer into the glass. As I said, I like a sort of acidic twist to it. So I'm taking a lime, just a dash on top. That's absolutely enough. And for garnish, a nice lemon slice, uh, sorry, orange slice, of course, and a maraschino cherry. Just drop it in, straw, and cheers, salute. Mm, that's awesome. Today I'll be making a tuna tartare with avocado mousse, uh, pomegranate and some salmorelia, salmorelia, salmorelia or a green sauce, whatever. Okay, so for this recipe you need, of course, a great quality tuna, best sashimi grade, if you can get your hands on it. Uh, you need shallots, garlic, chili, red onions, avocados, of course, some green herbs like parsley and coriander, uh, green capers for the salmorelia and some lemon zest. All right, so first let's start with the salmo rilio. So I'm having some coriander. I'm going to take some parsley. Don't need to be too particular about it because you're going to put it all into a mortar and pestle anyways. Just top it up with some garlic. About two cloves is about enough. Some capers. Don't be stingy with them. Just good two tablespoons. Lots of salt, cracked pepper of course, and now you have to pound it into a smooth paste. And make sure you get it into a nice, really smooth paste consistency. Once it is a paste, you just put some olive oil in it, extra virgin is best. And now you need some lemon zest. So you take a microplane or a grater and make sure you just get the yellow bit in. You're gonna need some lemon juice in it, just a dash, and there you go, that's your salmorelia, or a version of it actually. Just mix it up. So the first step is already done. Now we can move on to the avocado paste. Pick a really ripe, soft avocado. Make sure there's no brown spots in it. It's always a guessing game. Although there's a trick to it. If that bit is green, it means the avocado is a good chance the avocado is actually quite all right. But with avocados, you never really know. Oh, that's beautiful. That's awesome. So take the seed out. And to take it out, you can score it. You can make sure you don't score your hand. Take a spoon. Take all the meat out of the avocado. Do the same with the other half. In it goes. Now you take some shallots. One shallot, about one tablespoon of shallots is fine. 
some red chilies. I already deseeded those and cut them brunoise, like a really fine dice. You don't want them too chunky. Again, chunky. Now it needs a bit of salt and pepper, some acidity, just a drop or two. It actually prevents uh, from oxidization. And now you have to mix it all through, like really thoroughly. Best you do it with a fork. Okay, once you combine, combine all the ingredients in the avocado paste. And now we can get to our uh, main theme of event. So let me put some gloves on. The tuna. So for one portion, you probably need about 100, 120 grams. So let's cut a piece off. That's probably about 150 grams. And the thing is, the tuna tartar, uh, because tuna is not as fleshy as beef is, right? So you don't need to mince it like you would with a beef tartar. So what I like doing, I, I like to leave a bit of bite to it. I'm actually kind of dicing it rather than chopping it into a paste. So of course, you don't want the dice to be too big. It's still a tartar. You still want to form it, right? So actually, I'm, dice, I'm gonna dice it just like so. Give it a one more rough chop. And I would probably leave it right there. Okay, let's put it into a bowl. And now, uh, you want to put a drop of olive oil. Uh, some put some a little bit of soda water or um, still water in it, just to stop the oxidization. So you just mix it through. Add some salt and pepper. Mix it all up. Combine it, you see it comes all together, but it's still like crumbly. You don't want it like a paste, like I've seen the paste so many times. You just want it like a really small dice, all right? So now it's all seasoned. For the last step, let's get the pomegranate out. So the best way to do it, you just you cut it in half, you spread it just a little bit. Oh, there you go. It's actually so fleshy, I can take them out with my hands. Normally the best way to do it is to take a wooden spoon and just knock it on the outside and all the seeds that should fall in, fall out. Hey, come on, what kind of pomegranate is that? There's like 15 seeds, seeds inside. Okay, that will do. One portion, that's enough. All right, so let's assemble the dish. Let's take a plate. I prepared one of these rings just to make it fancy, even though it's outdoors. On the bottom, let's put the avocado paste. Spread it nice and evenly. Then take the tuna, some red onions in between, just to make a nice layer. I know there's shallots in the avocado paste, but these red onions, they would give a nice bite to it. All right. Put the tuna. You want to spoil your guests, right? Now you want to lift that ring. And there you go, now you have a beautiful tuna tower. So for the last step, you take your samorillo and you want to spread it all over. And for the garnish, you take the pomegranate. The pomegranate gives a really nice acidic finish to it. It has a certain sweetness and acidity and it goes really well with fish. And for the finishing touch, add sprinkle the baby herds all over your tuna. What goes well with, tuna, with tata? A little bit of bread. And isn't that beautiful? All right, so if you like the recipe, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more of us, hit the bell button in order to get notifications. And if you want me to do a special recipe, just let me know in the comment section. I thank you guys for watching and I see you next time. Mm -hmm.